All right, now on to our NASCAR Xfinity Series media availability. Can everybody hear that? Now on to our NASCAR Xfinity Series media availability for tomorrow's DC Solar 200, 4 p.m. Eastern time on Fox, by the way. We're joined by the driver of the number seven, Brandt Professional Agriculture Chevrolet, Justin Algeyer. The driver of the number 19, Junipur Toyota, Brandon Jones, and the driver of the number two, Dollar Shave Club Chevrolet, Matt Tift. So I thought we'd just go through in the line, and what are your thoughts on tomorrow as the defending winner, Justin? Uh, well, obviously, it's always good to come back to a racetrack where you've had some success at, and you know, winning here last year was great. Um, you know, for, for us as a team, you know, it was a great, great way to, uh, to lock our way into the playoffs. But, but also, too, you know, just uh, this is a fun racetrack. I, I love coming here since the first time we've, we've been able to come here. It's been a great racetrack um, for me as, as far as just being fun. And, you know, this race is no different. It's, um, you know, obviously the, the new name. Um, being called ISM Raceway, that's obviously a big deal for us. Everybody wants to win the first race, right? So you, you obviously want to win that race and have the, the trophy with that for the first time. But just getting a win anymore um, in the Xfinity Series is so important that, uh, you know, hopefully we can we can back up last year and, and go have some fun today. Matt? I think always coming for Phoenix has been enjo enjoyable for me. But, uh, you know, our schedule, it's such a change of pace of what we do run in the first part of the season. So uh, coming to a short track, a uh, place that has almost no banking, um, you know, it's, it's a fun track for the drivers. Um, you know, but for me, I feel like we've been one or two steps away from being good here, just haven't quite hit it. So uh, coming out here and, and coming from the experience of last year uh, into this season, I'm, I'm excited to get to practice today and see what we can do. Uh, with our Dollar Shave Club Camaro and you know, it's just um, it's always fun Coming out here, but it's a tricky tricky place And there's so many variables that you have going on and you have to get your car to be able to last the whole race So we'll be working on that and um, I'm looking forward to it Phoenix has always been one of those tracks that I've, I've had to put a lot of effort into uh, and trying to get really good at uh, That's been one of the really awesome things about my switch to Toyota this year is uh, using their resources and their simulator programs and everything they have there and uh, really, really working on this track. So I've been decent here in the past uh, and, and just haven't ever had that little bit extra edge to work into the top 10 and top five here. So I think uh, with all the work we've been putting in, uh, myself going back and studying races, watching film and stuff, I think I'm actually going to be uh, pretty good, hopefully. So we'll just have to, uh, we'll have to see when we get on track. But uh, this is always a, always a fun one for sure. Uh, me and Justin were just kidding. We we're going to do a little bit of sweating, I guess, this weekend. It's going to be kind of hot this weekend. So it's uh, it's a fun track to come to. All right, and I'll open up the floor for questions. Wolfgang. A question to Matt Tift. Uh, obviously, the Xfinity cars are different to the Cup cars. Nevertheless, are you going to get some advice from your Cup driver colleagues from Richard Childress Racing when you approach qualifying and race in Xfinity? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, one uh, one of the guys is going to be in there in the three-car. Uh, Ty Dillon will be there. And, um you know, Austin was really good here last year, and we got some great notes to go off of him. And, uh, you know, our Xfinity teammates have been good here in the past. Obviously, Daniel Hemrick had a great run here in the fall, so I'll be leaning on him. Uh, but, you know, also Ty to learn um, what he's been able to figure out in the cup car here. And, you know, this place is all about rolling momentum. And uh, the cup cars and Xfinity cars are obviously so different in the power bands that they have and the speeds that they carry. So uh, for sure, that's, the, that's been the great thing about RCR is the shared information there. And uh, we'll keep that line of communication to where I can learn some. Reed, did I see your hand up? Yeah. Go for it. Uh, Reed Spencer, NASCAR Wire Service. Now that, um, now that we're three races into the season, have you guys noticed a difference in terms of the flange fit? You know, I think um, as far as the fundamentals go, no, not really. You know, it, it, it's kind of same old for us. You know, we do the same things when we go to the racetrack. Um, you know, inspection line is, is the same, albeit <clears throat> probably a little bit harder if you're out of tolerance to, to be able to, to put yourself back into tolerance just because the bodies are um, – I, I don't know if rigid is more the right word, but they're, they're, they're not as pliable. Um, and, and two, the, the amount of bracing that we have is, is way different. We're, we're kind of stuck in a box with where the braces have to be at. So, you know, it, it puts it on the guys of the shop a lot more to, to have everything exactly where they need to be at. Um, I, you know, I think everybody's kind of going through that a little bit with the OSS. You know, we're, we're making changes anyways. Uh, but I think, you know, for us, the, the one 
the one thing that's been been nice is that the the composite body has been pretty seamless as far as just introducing it and, and rolling it out and um, you know it, it takes a lot of work to make it seamless but but all the teams have really put in the effort and the time and it, it seems like it's working out really well. You can go. He doesn't really want to answer. <laughs> I was just curious if you two have like a friendly bet since you almost like switched places over the off season. Which of the two of you was going to finish higher in points this season? That's why I let them sit next to each other. No, that's going to be me. <laughs> yeah. No, I, we haven't really talked about that, have we? No, we haven't. It, it is kind of funny how that works. And, you know, it was funny. That was the first time it's hit me all year when he was introducing us. And he said the number 19. I was like, oh, wait, no, that's not me. <laughs> A little different for sure. Uh, I think you've got a lot of my old guys as well. So going through the garage, I still talk to all, you know, all his crew and wave and everything. So it's uh, it's funny, but uh, it is how the sport works. I mean, it's like a it's kind of a cycle every once in a while. You get into a, an area where you, you're out of place for a couple of years and you switch. And then even with the team guys, it feels like, I mean, I've had crew chiefs that have been in places before and then I've reconnected with them, you know, a couple of years later at a new team. So uh, it's kind of a cycle of racing. Yeah, I mean, even for me, you know, our motor guy, Lanny Barnes, he was on my ARCA car at Schrader's years ago. So there's always people you're going to reconnect with and, and be with them. So this, uh, it, it kind of goes back to how NASCAR really is a family, and you're going to work with each other one way or another uh, throughout your career. So it's better to be on, on good terms with those guys, and obviously they're both very respectable organizations, and I think we're both happy to be where we're at. Uh, for me, going to this new team in general is always kind of difficult. You have to relearn everybody, and you have to relearn exactly how everyone kind of feeds and takes information from you. Uh, and so for myself, I'm, I'm having to learn how to tell Chris Gaypart, my crew chief, about how the car is handling and things like that. Uh, so something that may have worked last year with Nick Harrison may not work with Chris Gaypart. You know? So I've, I've had to relearn what he kind of likes to hear and stuff on the radio some. Uh, as far as the cars, they're completely different inside. Uh, I switched actually this year to a, a whole new style seat, so I'm doing carbon fiber seats instead of the aluminum. Uh, so that was way different, trying to get that all fitted up correctly. Uh, dash layouts are all different. So there's there's so much different stuff. Uh, obviously, manufacturer switch, and so relearning faces there and, 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 re, and you know learning what kind of resources we have to use there and uh, making sure I take advantage of them too because uh, there's plenty of it there to, to get good at. That's Funny, I, I can't really say anything different other than it's just the opposite side. I mean, same thing for me. You're switching from Toyota Chevy. You have uh, different seats. You're uh, doing different seat inserts. Uh, for, you know, when we got through Daytona, uh, we kind of assessed where we were at with everything between communication on the team, driver comfort, all that kind of stuff, and we made adjustments. And I feel like it's been pretty easy uh, as far as that stuff going, and, and it feels like we're um, not in, the, in a transition phase anymore, but just kind of in the flow of things now. And I think... Once you get through Atlanta, that's kind of your landmark weekend to get things all kind of getting together because the jump between Daytona and Atlanta is so tough uh, for your, you know, your routine, your rhythm of the weekend. So once you get through there in Vegas, you kind of feel like the everything is going as you're kind of used to it being. So, um, but it's it's been great for me. But uh, it's it's definitely a, a change, but it's um, it's been fun and I've really enjoyed it. And I think um, me and Randall Burnett have worked really well together, and I'm excited what, to see what we can do. Chris? Back on Lee's question. Uh, are you guys content with your performances with your new teams after three races? And then I have a follow for Brandon. I, I, no, uh, not yet. I feel like we are uh, making progress every single week. And I think that's the important thing is just uh, continuing to build and continuing to get better. Uh, obviously, we've been one or two spots out of the side of the top 10 uh, the last couple of weeks. So we want to break inside there and run inside there. So um, I think we're getting closer. And one of the hardest things, too, is just to get a, a baseline package off the truck that, you know, it, he's got to learn what I want in the car and I got to learn how to give my feedback to him and, and what will make us better. So um, I'm definitely not content. We don't have a, a win on the board yet and we're we're not going to stop until we get there. And obviously the goals will continue to uh, elevate as we go throughout the season. Uh, last week we were extremely happy with how, how the race went with us. Uh, every single weekend so far we've had something go wrong though. So I haven't 100% uh, really assessed how, like, you know, as, as a team that we're doing. Uh, but the, the really big positive out of it has been something's gone wrong, and then we just rebound and fight back and, and get a good finish out of it. So uh, no one gets too crazy and too excited on the radio. Everyone seems pretty calm. Um, and like I said, we've, we've had either get into a couple incidents or we've had some flats or something, and we just rebound and, and uh, try to get a top 10 and salvage out of the day. So they've done an excellent job at executing on that. 
uh, this whole year. Um, but I think after the five races, the first five, I think we're going to have a really good assessment of where we're at. Brandon, it seems like you've it appears that you've picked up your game from a <laughs> performance standpoint as, as far as being in the gym and, and whatnot, working out and whatnot. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I uh, something I should have really, really put a lot of emphasis on last year and uh, just didn't uh, for whatever reason. And so I've uh, I've kind of been committed this year to to doing as much as I possibly can to uh, to eliminate on my side of the things, anyways, of of uh, you know what could be causing performance uh, wise stuff. Uh, and so working out in the gym, studying so much film, and so studying so many things on the simulator and data and and uh, things like that that JGR has uh, from the past and and the present. Uh, so I've been putting in, you know, pretty much Sunday all the way up until we leave uh, time and time and work. So we're trying anyways, you know, we're trying to get there and trying to get uh, to that top five level and to, and to get a win level. Any more? Bob. To Kyle Bush at all after <laughs> last week or do you just kind of let that go? No, we did. We uh, I called him on the phone and uh, talked to him and, and got his side of view and everything on that. And so uh, it's just uh, just hard to race him, man. It's so difficult to pass on these cars and these tracks uh, when these cars are so close the way they are. So um, just a little bit of a racing incident, uh, but we did talk about it, and uh, we're all smoothed over, and I think we're on the same page now and everything. Lee again. Justin, talk a little bit about the, the dynamic at JRM because – you and Elliot, it's like every year you seem to be there. And what's that like for your relationship? Because it just to me, it would be like I don't know. I'm I'm trying to figure out if if you know just knowing the kind of um, how competitive you both are, and knowing you're in the same equipment, it just seems to whatever happens, you guys always seem to find each other. Yeah, I mean it's hard. You know, obviously. Um when you go to a race team where you've got multiple cars, I mean, we have four cars and we've got four great race teams and, you know, every week we, we find ourselves battling each other, you know, as much as we battle everybody else, we battle each other. And, and, you know, Elliot and I obviously have been teammates now for the last two seasons going on to the third season this year. And, and, uh, it's been fun. It, it's not without challenge. I mean, obviously number one, um, you, you're going to race a teammate a little bit differently than you are everybody else. I mean, that's just, it's just the nature of it, right? You, 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 you're going to be more aggressive or you're going to, you're going to, you're going to take up more real estate when you're racing somebody else versus a teammate. Um, but on the flip side of it, you know, you, that could be the difference in winning or not. And, and that could be the difference in winning a championship or not. Last year it was a difference in winning a championship. Um, you know, the addition of Tyler this year has been really good. Um, obviously he stepped right in and, and, and has run really well, um, already. So, you know, I think the dynamic for us is, is always been, you know, if it's the last lap and you're going for the win, you know, you go hard. And I, and I think that um, Dale and Kelly and, and um, everybody at, at Junior Motorsports kind of is that same way, right? Just just don't wreck each other. You know, that's that's been the biggest thing is we, we can't afford to um, to wreck each other. And, and so for us, we still all get along really well. We, we share information. I mean, that's the one thing that's great. I mean, you know, these guys have both talked about the information share and teammates. And, um, you know, I, that's the one thing that has, has elevated Junior Motorsports, I feel like. Um, in the Xfinity series is the crew chiefs get along well, the drivers get along well, the teams get along well. Um, we all have an open an open share policy. I mean, anything that that we find, we're we're we're, we're helping each other. Last week, I mean, we were we were off when we unloaded. We we didn't didn't hit where we wanted to hit, and we made some changes and and you know followed the direction that our teammates went and and you know was able to drive up and finish third. So I mean, it was you know that that's the kind of stuff that we we have to rely on and and. Um, you know, you hope you get four cars in at Homestead and, and go in for a championship, and then you just race new teammates. It makes it a lot easier. Any more? All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you coming by.